Welcome back to the Tales from the Cult YouTube channel and the Charisma Speaks podcast. I am your hostess with the mostest, Queen Charisma, and I am here with another exposing video and podcast episode. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more raw and authentic content. Now, let's get started. SC Alexander, also known as SC Alexander Barry, was the fifth and final wife of the late talented actor and dancer Fred Berry, who famously portrayed the red beret wearing, dim witted character rerun in the highly rated 1976 comedy sitcom What's Happening. Essie was married to Fred until his passing. It is alleged that Essie was born in Columbus, Georgia in October of 1969. She became a cosmetologist at the age of 20 and graduated from the Hair Design School of Cosmetology in 1989 before gaining recognition as the wife of Fred Berry in 1999. Barry allegedly married Essie when he was 48 years old and she was approximately 30 years old, resulting in an 18 year age difference between them. Tragically, Barry passed away in 2003 due to natural causes after filing for divorce from Essie. According to reports, he accused Essie of using his name for profit since their marriage. It has been reported that Essie had two sons out of wedlock with two different men, allegedly named Dexter Nickerson and Bernard Jackson. However, it is unclear whether she had her children before or after her marriage to Barry, as they did not have children together. Reportedly, while attempting to pursue a career as a rapper under the alleged alias Darlene Red and claiming to be a member of the Bloods gang, allegedly, Essie dated a man named Frederick Payne, who she also referred to as her bodyguard. Essie continued to use Fred Berry's last name to promote her various endeavors and to gain credibility in the public eye. During this period, it appears that Payne and Essie were seeking opportunities to advance their careers. In a 2022 video interview with YouTuber Geneva's Closet, Essie was asked how she met Steve Harvey's ex-wife, Mary Harvey. Essie revealed that both she and Payne had conceived the idea of a reality TV show. Essie stated that, quote, my bodyguard, we were searching for people to be on the show already reruns exes were going to be on the show any of reruns exes were going to be on the show end quote essie was in the process of casting for a show called widow wives and exes which was intended to feature exclusively celebrity widows and exes according to essie her ex-boyfriend Payne suggested that she contact Mary. Before that, Essie had no interest in Steve Harvey's personal life as she was not a big fan of his. After Essie finally spoke to Mary and pitched her idea for the reality TV show, Mary hesitated and informed Essie that she was under a gag order and could not discuss her former marriage with the Family Feud host. Allegedly, Mary reached out to some producers to seek help with Essie for her show. Despite receiving a negative response, Essie persisted and started investigating Mary's gag order to understand why she was prohibited from discussing Steve Harvey, their relationship, 
and their son's personal matters. Unfamiliar with the term gag order, Essie conducted research online to understand its meaning and discovered that a gag order was a court order issued by a judge that prevented Mary from discussing personal matters related to Steve and their son. Essie then began to view the situation as a civil rights violation and launched a campaign against Steve Harvey. Essie alleged that Steve Harvey was attempting to silence a black woman even though the issue had nothing to do with Mary's race, as Harvey is also black. Essie reached out to Steve's legal team to inquire about the topics that Mary was allowed to discuss, and even asked one of Steve's lawyers about the suspected child of Essie asserted that Mary never disclosed to her directly that she or her son were victims of Steve's abuse. However, Essie claimed to have seen a letter allegedly written by Mary denouncing Steve's physical towards her and their son. As per the Toronto Sun, Mary alleged that Steve brutally their son when he lied about his schoolwork. Following this, the police referred the case to the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services, who investigated the allegation. They concluded that their child was not at risk and the case was closed without further investigation. According to reports, Steve was accused because Mary alleged that he was unfaithful to her with Marjorie Harvey. Essie started developing conspiracy theories claiming that Steve forced Mary to write the letter and that his lawyers were corrupt and trying to hide something. Despite this, Essie remained frustrated as Mary was unable to participate in her reality TV show and began relentlessly defaming Steve, his legal team, and the judge who issued the gag order to Mary, and anyone who she believed was involved. Essie created numerous videos targeting Steve Harvey and boasted about how she quote, lit the internet up in 2013, end quote. Reportedly, Essie started discussing the topics that Mary was prohibited from speaking about after Mary gave her sealed documents. Consequently, Mary was imprisoned for 30 days in Colon County, Texas, and Essie was served with a legal notice for violating the initial gag order by speaking on Mary's behalf. Currently, Essie has an active warrant in Colon County, Texas. Despite being a self-proclaimed civil rights activist, Essie failed to appear in court to support Mary. Consequently, Mary had to face the consequences alone and attended her court hearing without legal representation before being incarcerated. Nevertheless, Essie continued to speak about the private information contained in Mary's gag order. In 2017, she collaborated with YouTuber Geneva's Closet, and Geneva began interviewing Essie, repeating information from the sealed legal documents. As expected, Geneva was served with a legal notice to refrain from speaking about the gag order or face the consequences. However, she continued to defame Steve Harvey with Essie for approximately five years, allegedly, from 2017 to 2023. Eventually, the YouTuber met Essie in person and became friends with her on social media. 
During her journey, Essie tried to enlist other smaller bloggers, but was unsuccessful. She eventually teamed up with YouTuber Storm Monroe, who has over 200,000 subscribers, and the two began defaming Steve Harvey and Mary. Regrettably, Storm is now repeating the private information from the sealed documents that Mary leaked to Essie which is a violation of her gag order. In one of Storm's video interviews with Essie titled, Essie Berry calls out Mary Harvey for being a bad mother and being mentally ill, she even went as far as to accuse Mary of being a bad mother which contradicted her previous statements that Steve was the bad parent. Mary even contacted Storm to warn him that Essie was a manipulator and liar. Despite her warnings, Essie and Storm continued to defame and taunt Steve. Essie seems to have forgotten that she already has an active warrant for her arrest in Texas for violating Mary's gag order, which means that Steve has already taken legal action. Storm seems to be oblivious to the fact that he may also face legal repercussions if Steve files a defamation lawsuit against both him and Essie, given that she is on his platform. This is reminiscent of what happened to his former mentor, Tasha Kay, who was sued by rapper Cardi B for defamation of character and now owes millions of dollars. Regrettably, some bloggers are resorting to defaming celebrities to gain notoriety and fame. Still, this trend could lead to severe consequences such as demonetization and termination of their YouTube channels, as well as both parties having to bear the burden of legal expenses. I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic, so please share them in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Tales from the Cult YouTube channel for more exposing content. Thank you for watching.